In Honduras, family members continue to demand answers after a prison fire killed more than 350 people. On Monday, relatives broke into a morgue demanding their loved ones' remains. Many Hondurans are also questioning a second fire that erupted over the weekend at the country's largest outdoor market in Tegucigalpa. No one was killed, but many vendors now lack a place to sell their goods. The fires are just the latest disasters to hit the country with the highest homicide rate in the world. Human rights in the country have declined since the 2009 coup, and one of the most violent regions is the Bajo Aguan. There, at least 64 farm workers, or campesinos, have been killed over the last two years because of complex land conflicts with the country's wealthiest landowner, Miguel Facuse. Over the weekend, more than 1,400 campesinos, indigenous people, and their allies met to continue their efforts to fight repression. From Tacoa, Honduras, FSRN's Tim Russo reports. Activists organized the international gathering in solidarity with Honduras to expose the rampant violations of human rights and the systematic killing of campesinos. For months, campesinos have been struggling for land rights as agricultural corporations take over more land. The fight is centered around Miguel Facuse and his agrofuels Dinant Corporation, as well as the Standard Fruit Company. Speaking to the crowd, Melissa Cardosa, with the convergence of popular movements in the Americas, read from the gathering's declaration about the state of human rights in Honduras. The war in Honduras has been furiously unleashed since the coup d'etat is manifested with assassination, persecution, the criminalization of organized actions, kidnappings, sexual violence towards women, intentional crimes that terrorize the children that live in the villages of campesinos in struggle, attacks against the grassroots media, imprisonment, exile, and lately, arson attacks against the distinct populations of the country. One of the objectives of the gathering was to launch an international solidarity brigade which would observe human rights abuses in the Bajo Aguan region. In this vast valley, landowners like Facuse grow African palm, which is then processed and made into cooking oils and biodiesel. Consuela Castillas used to work on one of Facuse's African palm plantations. The middle-aged campesina, who was born in the Bajo Aguan, eventually began organizing with the unified campesino movement of the Aguan, both to secure land rights and to fight for the health of workers. Castilla herself suffers from chronic asthma from years of working with toxic chemicals used in palm production. She says the threats against activists like herself have been increasing. For approximately eight months, there's been a continuous persecution by the private security forces of Miguel Facusa towards my house and my daughters, where they live in Corlazita. There's been a constant and daily monitoring of my daughters and a persecution towards them when they leave for school. In addition to private security forces, the state military presence in Honduras and the Aguan specifically has increased since President Porfirio Lobo took office in 2010. Activists say this has increased the harassment of communities challenging the vast monocrop fiefdom run by Facuse. Salvador Zuniga works with the Council of Popular and Indigenous Organizations of Honduras. He says the death threats are an everyday occurrence for environmentalists and campesinos who inhabit many biologically diverse regions of Honduras. I think that it's important that the world knows about the constant violation of human rights in our country continues and has become quite acute. It is good that people know about this, but also that they plan actions to be executed in defense of our human rights in a country that is becoming characterized by violence and repression, and in particular in the sector of Bajo Aguan, where a daily occurrence is the detention of men and women campesinos as well as their assassinations. In addition to international human rights groups, some U.S. lawmakers have also expressed concerns about the violence in Honduras. Late last year, Congress member Howard Berman wrote to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton expressing his concern about the systematic violations of human rights and killings of campesinos in Honduras. Berman and other lawmakers want the State Department to withhold military aid until human rights improve. But Annie Byrd, co-director of the Washington, D.C.-based Rights Action, says there has been little response from the Obama administration to the growing violence. She says that could be due to geopolitical interests and the expanding U.S. military presence in Honduras.
The U.S. has a very direct military presence in the Yuan and, of course, in Honduras in general. While it is true that the government of Honduras has completely collapsed, there's no justice system, the police are part of organized crime, the military is part of organized crime, you know, the conclusion that's being drawn from that is, well, then the U.S. needs to militarize more, have a direct military presence, the DEA acting directly in the region, um, and then also we need to create new police forces for um, Honduras, that the U.S. needs to do that, um, when that is absolutely the wrong answer to what's happening. More militarization will not change the situation or solve any problem. The Campesinos Fight for Land Rights is starting to achieve some results. Last Friday, a group of farm workers signed an agreement with President Porfirio Lobo, which would give land titles to campesinos for close to 20,000 acres of land over the next 15 years. But some have criticized the latest agreement, which includes a 6% interest rate on the payment of the lands. Activists are also demanding an end to detentions of labor leaders and the harassment of families. Tim Russo, FSRN, Tocoa, Honduras.